In this video, I'll formally introduce using MATLAB to perform arithmetic on scalars. Scalars are simply single numbers, like 5, negative 3, and 2. MATLAB is actually intended to operate on collections of numbers, called arrays. So many of MATLAB's arithmetic operators have special meanings when they're applied to arrays, which won't be obvious while we're dealing with scalars. In the first part of this video, I'll introduce MATLAB's arithmetic operators. These are the symbols used to denote addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and exponentiation. Some of MATLAB's operators do exactly the same thing if they're applied to scalars. However, if these operators are applied to arrays, they do very different things. So don't worry about it if some of our operators appear to be redundant for now. Once we start working with arrays, we'll see their differences. In the second part of this video, I'll talk about the order in which MATLAB performs arithmetic operations. This is generally called the precedence of the operations. Before we do anything else, I want to give you a quick introduction to the concepts of scalars versus arrays. Scalars are single numbers, like 5, negative 12, and pi. In MATLAB, a scalar variable is a variable to which a single number is assigned, like my var equals 12. Arrays are groups of numbers. That is, a given variable can contain many numbers. For example, this array, A, contains nine numbers, organized in three rows and three columns. This array, X, has three numbers in a single row. Y also has three numbers, now organized in a single column. We'll spend a lot of time later talking about arrays and how MATLAB deals with them, but for now we're only interested in arithmetic using scalar values. Now let's talk about MATLAB's arithmetic operators. Some of these will appear to be redundant, but we'll get into their differences after we've talked about arrays. As you'd probably expect, addition and subtraction are done with the plus and the minus signs respectively. These are the only MATLAB operators that don't have alternate forms. There are two multiplication operators, an asterisk and an asterisk with a period in front of it. I'll call these times and dot times. These two operators do exactly the same thing if they're applied to scalars. However, if the operands are arrays, there's a big difference in these operators. So don't get into the habit of thinking that they're exactly the same thing. We'll see that they're very different once we start dealing with arrays and matrices. MATLAB has four division operators, slash, dot slash, backslash, and dot backslash. If the values they operate on are scalars, slash does the same thing as dot slash, and backslash does the same thing as dot backslash. The difference between the forward and backward slash is simply which number is be being divided by which. The numerator is always on what I consider to be the uphill side of the slash, here, 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 or here. Therefore, both 6 slash 2 and 6 dot slash 2 are 6 divided by 2, or 3. 2 backslash 6, or 2 dot backslash 6, are 6 divided by 2, which is also 3. Finally, exponentiation is done with the caret symbol, or a dot, and then the caret symbol. For scalar operands, both of these operators perform identical operations. For arrays, as you might have guessed, they don't. Now let's do a few examples of using these operators. I can multiply 2 times 5 by typing 2 asterisk 5 and pressing enter. I get the same result when I type 2 dot asterisk 5 and press enter. Since the operands, the numbers 2 and 5, are scalars, or single numbers, there's no difference in what the two operators do. We can divide 7 by 2 using the slash operator by typing 7 slash 2 and pressing enter. We get 3.5 as we'd expect. Dividing 7 by 2 with the dot slash operator results in the same thing. Now let's divide 7 by 2 using the backslash operator. To do this, type 2 backslash 7. We're still taking the number 7, the number on the uphill side of the operator, and dividing it by 2. We still get 3.5 as our result. We've just changed the way we do the calculation. Likewise, if we use the dot backslash operator, we type 2 dot backslash 7. 
7 is still on the uphill side of the division operator, so we're still dividing 7 by 2 and our result is 3.5 again. Finally, to illustrate the exponentiation operators, let's take the square of 3. We can do this by typing 3 caret 2, which gives us 9, as we'd expect, or by typing 3 dot caret 2, which still gives us 9. In order to evaluate a mathematical expression containing several operators, we need to know what order MATLAB performs these operations in. This order is called the operator precedence. If you use a handheld calculator, it's likely that these rules of precedence look very familiar. Most calculators and programming languages use the same rules. The rules of precedence are fairly straightforward. Exponentiation is done first. Multiplication and division are done next. Addition and subtraction are performed last. Operators at the same level of precedence are done from left to right. Now, parentheses can be used to modify these rules. Expressions within parentheses are performed first. Within the parentheses, of course, operations are done according to the previous rules. If you have sets of parentheses inside other sets of parentheses, or nested parentheses, work from the inner to the outer set of parentheses. Now let's do some examples of these rules. If we type an expression like 5 plus 18 divided by 3 squared, the exponent will be evaluated first. So MATLAB will calculate 3 squared and return 9. Division is done before addition, so the next calculation will be 18 divided by 9, which results in 2. Finally, the addition process is done last, so 2 and 5 will be added, and the overall result will be 7. Suppose we modify our example slightly so that we type 5 plus 18 over 3 in parentheses squared. We do operations within parentheses before those outside parentheses, so we divide 18 by 3 first, which gives us 6. Now, we do all the remaining calculations in the order of the operator precedence. Exponentiation is done before addition, so first we square 6 to get 36. All that's left to do is the addition, so 36 plus 5 is 41. Let's use some nested parentheses and modify our expression to parentheses 5 plus 18 over 3 in parentheses, then close our first set of parentheses and square the whole quantity. We do the computation on the inner set of parentheses first and evaluate 18 over 3 to get 6. Then we work our way to the outer set of parentheses and calculate 5 plus 6 to get 11. Now all the expressions in parentheses have been evaluated, so the last thing we do is square 11 to get 121. Now, to emphasize that operators of equal precedence are done left to right, we'll evaluate 8 divided by 4 divided by 2. We're doing two division operations, and there are no parentheses, so the operations are done from left to right. Therefore, first divide 8 by 4 to get 2, and then divide 2 by 2 to get 1. In this video, I've introduced the basics necessary to perform arithmetic operations on scalars. These consisted of the MATLAB operators themselves and the rules of operator precedence. As a reminder, there are a wide variety of operators in MATLAB. They generally fall into two categories. Undotted operators, which probably look familiar or at least somewhat intuitive, and dotted operators. These operators use the same symbol as their undotted counterparts, but they include a period in front of the symbol. For scalar operands, the dotted and undotted operators perform exactly the same operations, and you can pick one or the other at random. Later on, however, when we use arrays and matrices as our operands, the dotted and undotted operators work differently. For now, just keep in mind that we'll have to start paying attention to the differences between the dotted and undotted operators soon, but we'll get more practice using MATLAB with scalars first. In our next video, we'll talk about MATLAB's built-in functions. These functions, of course, include trigonometric, exponential, and logarithmic functions that you're likely already familiar with. But these are just the tip of the iceberg. MATLAB has thousands of built-in functions.